In this video, we will try to solve the dining philosopher's problem using monitors. As we have seen in the previous lecture, which explained the dining philosopher's problem using semaphores. So, we have a set of philosophers seated around a circular table with a shared bowl of rice in between. And these philosophers, they spend their lives thinking and eating and they do not interact with their neighbors. So, there are n chopsticks for n philosophers. That means if there are 5 philosophers, then there are 5 chopsticks and each philosopher needs both the chopsticks to eat. Occasionally, whenever the philosopher is hungry, they will try to pick up one chopstick at a time and eat from the bowl and once they are done eating, they will release both the chopsticks. So, we saw that this shared bowl of rice is referring to the shared data set or the critical section and each philosopher over here is a process and these chopsticks are the resources or the semaphores which will control access to this particular shared bowl of rice. So, when we look at this problem using semaphores, we saw that it led to a deadlock. There was a possibility of a deadlock. So, let us take a look at the monitor solution to the dining philosopher's problem. Here, the restriction that is placed is that a philosopher may pick up the chopsticks only if both of them are available. So, that means if any philosopher wants to eat, if P0 wants to eat, then he should be able to pick both the chopsticks C0 and C1 if they are available. If chop philosopher P2 wants to eat, then he should be able to pick up both the chopsticks C2 and C3. So, this is the restrict restriction that they may pick up the chopsticks only if both the chopsticks are available to the philosopher. Now, we need to distinguish among the three stray states in which we may find a philosopher. So, this monitor solution, this proposes the use of some data structures and there are three states in which a philosopher may be the thinking state, the hungry state or the eating state. So, there is an array of five philosophers because we have five philosophers over here. So, we have an array which is the state array which is defining the state of a particular philosopher. So, each philosopher may either be in the thinking state or the hungry state or the eating state. And any philosopher I, they can set their variable to eating only if its two neighbors are not eating. So, we have seen that since philosopher 0, if he wants to eat, he requires both the chopsticks C0 and C1. And this is possible only if its neighbor P1 or its neighbor P4 is not eating. So, this is the condition that the philosopher may start to eat if the neighbors, if the left and the right neighbors are not eating. And we have seen in the earlier video that the left and right neighbors are specified by these i plus 4 modulus 5 and i plus 1 modulus 5. So, if i is equal to 0, then this will give 4 and this will give 1. That means neighbors 1 and 4 should not be eating. So, this is the condition over here. So, only when the neighbors, the left and the right neighbors are not eating, then any philosopher I can change its state to eating. Another uh, declaration over here is the declaration of the condition variables of self. So, this again is an array of 5 because we are taking the example of 5 philosophers over here. And if you look at a previous video on monitors, it shows how conditions, condition variables can be declared. So, here this condition variable allows the philosopher I to delay when he, she is hungry but is unable to obtain the chopsticks that are required. So, if a philosopher wanted to eat and that means he or she was hungry but because one of the neighbors was eating and they were unable to obtain the chopsticks, so then using this condition variable, they can declare that he or she is hungry but is currently delaying 
the eating process. So before any philosopher starts wants to eat, they must invoke the pickup operation. This involves the picking up of the chopsticks and chopsticks over here are simply referring to the semaphores which are controlling the access to that shared bowl of rice which is the data set. And if the philosopher which is invoking this pickup operation, if he is unable to get the chopsticks, then it will result in the suspension of that process. So any process which is not able to get the chopsticks will be suspended. But if the operation, the pickup operation, if it is successful, then the philosopher may eat. And after eating, the philosopher will invoke the put down operation, which is putting down of both the chopsticks. So let's see how monitors will help in this. You can watch my earlier video on monitors to see how, what is the construct of the monitors. So here are the declarations. One is the declaration of the state of the philosopher which can be either thinking, hungry or eating. Then these are the condition variables, self of again size 5. So first the dining philosophers they have to pick up and then after eating they have to put down. First let us initialize, use the initialization code. Each monitor has some initialization code. And in this initialization code, we can see that for int i is equal to 0 to less than 5, the state of the philosopher, each of the philosopher, the state is set, set to thinking. That means each philosopher in the beginning is set to the thinking state. So here, each item over here, each element over here in this array of 5 would be set to this thinking state. Now, whenever a philosopher wants to eat, they have to invoke the pickup function. So here are the functions that have been defined within the construct of the monitor. So this is the pickup function and i is referring to the number of the philosopher. So philosopher i wants to eat, so philosopher i will invoke the pickup function. So it will set its state to hungry. Because the philosopher wants to eat, so initially the state was thinking but now it will set its state to hungry. And now before picking up the chopsticks, he has to make sure that both the neighbors are not eating. That means the left and the right neighbors are not eating. To check that, he will invoke the test function. So let's take a look at the test function. So we have this test function over here. And here we are going to check whether the neighbors are eating or not. We have seen that for each philosopher i, the left and the right neighbors are given by i plus 1 modulus 5 and i plus 4 modulus 5. So these are the left and the right neighbors. So now we have to check whether the neighbors are eating or not. So if state of i plus 4 modulus 5 is not eating, that means this i plus 4 modulus 5 would be referring to the right neighbor. That means if the right neighbor is not eating, and state of i is hungry that means the philosopher i is hungry which is already true because the philosopher i has set its state to hungry over here and state of i plus 1 modulus 5 is also not eating that means the right neighbor is not eating and the left neighbor is not eating and philosopher i is hungry so if all these three conditions are true then only the, this whole condition of the within the if condition would be true. So if all these three conditions are true, that means the philosopher can eat. So the state of I will be equal to eating and it will signal itself because it wants to show that the eating process has been completed. So this, uh, this condition variable will be signaled. If either of the left neighbor or the right neighbor had been eating, then this condition within the if environment over here would have become false. If either the left neighbor, which is i plus 1 modulus 5 or the right neighbor i plus 4 modulus 5, if either of them had been eating, then the condition would have become false 
and the philosopher would not have been able to enter this environment. So, this philosopher would not be able to eat. So, in that case, this condition would not be true. So, test I would fail, the philosopher would not be eating. So, that means if either of the neighbors are eating, then the state of the philosopher is not eating. So, if the state of the philosopher is not eating, then it will invoke the wait operation on itself. So, it will delay its uh, eating and it will suspend itself. If, if the neighbors were not eating, then the philosopher would have been able to eat and its state would have been eating. Then in that case, this condition over here would have been false and so this would not have worked over here. So, that means the, at any point in time when a philosopher wants to eat, it invokes the pick up uh, a function, it sets its state to hungry, then it checks whether the neighbors are eating or not. If the neighbors are not eating, it will set its state to eating and it will signal its uh, self condition variable. And if by any chance if the neighbors are eating, then this condition of not eating will be true and the process will invoke the weight operation on the self and be suspended. Let us assume that both the neighbors were not eating. So, the state of this philosopher is eating. After eating, now the philosopher has to put down the chopsticks. So, now it will invoke the put down function. It will set its state to thinking. That means now the philosopher I has finished eating and now it is back into the thinking state. Now again it will test its left or right neighbors. So first it will call the test on I plus 4 modulus 5 which is the right neighbor. So it is passing this value of I in the test function. So again that means it is allowing or asking the right neighbor to check whether it wants to eat or not. So if now I plus 4 modulus 5 which is the right neighbor, so this is the value that is being passed into this function over here. Now again that philosopher will check whether its left or right neighbors are eating or not and depending on whether they are not eating or eating, it will start eating if it is hungry. So in this way, when the philosopher I puts down its chopstick, it also tests whether the left and right neighbors were hungry or not and if they wanted to eat and in that case if they wanted to eat, then they can be signaled also to eat. So this is how the dining philosopher's problem can be solved using monitors and since each philosopher is testing its neighbors before eating, it does not result in a deadlock condition.